if you're looking for something new to freshen up your stemware or perhaps a great gift, well, Bill Mahoney from Premier Wine and Spirits is back with a lesson on selecting the right wine glasses and the wrong wine glasses, too, that you want to stay away from. And our phones are open for your calls at 644-9840. Hello, William. How Hi, are I'm you? I'm great. I'm doing great. I had no idea that a glass can make a difference in the taste of a wine. It absolutely does. And this is one of the biggest oversights that we see mm -hmm. in the wine profession where people spend all their money on the wine and then they completely neglect the glasses that they pour it into. So you really have to try this experiment on your own to become a believer. I've told customers time and time again that glassware does affect the flavor and the aroma of the wine and they just kind of look at me like, oh, you're nuts. So <laughs> we're going to try this today. All right, um, but we should show people what would not be considered right. good wine glassware. Well, now, the, right. you probably have a lot of these at home, right? right? You know, they look, they look beautiful mm -hmm. when they're colored or, or etched or have different things like that. But, um, you know, really, when, when it comes to wine glasses, you want the, the form to follow the function. You want the content to determine the shape. So, you know, even though these look nice, mm -hmm. they're not really um, accelerating or enhancing the quality of the wine. And that's interesting because a glass like this would obviously be made to drink wine. Right. And, you know, I mean, it, it's more for dressing up the table and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But if you really want to get the most enjoyment out of your wine and to, to pull out all of the nuance in your wine, that's probably not the right glass. And one of the reasons is you want your wine glasses to be completely clear. Oh. Any type of shading or etching on the glass really distorts your ability to see the color of the wine. And, you know, wine is not just red or white. It has mm -hmm. all kinds of brilliant hues and tones, and, you know, that will obstruct your view of the wine. Well, Bill, I noticed you have this one here, and this is the latest in um, wine glasses that they're selling, and that's the stemless wine. Right. And even that would not be correct. That's my opinion, mm -hmm. and I know about a year or so ago I made a lot of enemies when I said <laughs> that those were an abomination. I didn't censor myself, and I should have. So let me just... No, re no, no. Right. <laughs> okay. Let me just rephrase. I mean, that's not the worst thing you can do. Okay. So, you know, I mean, if you're just drinking out of some, you know, colored glass, it's frosted with gold etching on the top of it, that's probably worse than that glass. Okay. You know, so, but, but one of the things is, in, in that glass, you're, you're forced to hold it yeah. by the bowl, mm -hmm. and, you know, if you've ever seen wine tastings and things, people generally will hold by the stem. Mm -hmm. and, and the stem is there for a reason. You know, this is so that your, your hand is not warming up the wine. And whenever your, your wine gets warmer, it will accentuate the alcohol in the wine and make it taste harsher. So the stem is there so you don't have that to okay. affect the wine. All right, well, you're going you're gonna to actually prove this to me. Yes. Okay. So with the shape of the, the glass, mm -hmm. that will actually determine, um, you know, the, the type of wine that you should be pouring in it. And there okay. are a couple standard shapes. That the one that you have directly mm -hmm. in front of you is a burgundy glass. Mm -hmm. And burgundy glasses are generally designed for Pinot Noir. Um, and then there's another shape, which is a Bordeaux glass, mm -hmm. and this would be more for Cabernet Sauvignon or more full body. This looks more, like it went on a diet. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not, not it worked as, out. as uh, blown as this. <laughs> Cheers. Mm -hmm. And so what you can do first is smell this wine. And when you smell it, you want to give it a little swirl. And you'll smell the aromatics mm -hmm. coming through. It's, it's very open. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your wine will smell a little different than mine because we have two different types of wine in them. But then go back down to this other wine here and smell that in the small glass. The and, premier glass. Well, yeah, that's just more for <laughs> practical tastings and things, but it doesn't... Oh, it doesn't smell anything like this one. Totally it hardly different. smells at all, totally as a matter different. of fact. Yep. Now, when, when we look at these glasses with a little bit more detail, okay. the one thing that's different is that the bowl is going to be very thin, and the other thing that you'll notice is that the rim is cut cleanly. It doesn't have that beveled lip like a lot of inexpensive oh, glasses have. Oh, I see. Have. Okay. And what that bevel will do will interrupt your ability to taste the wine. When you have a bevel, it forces you to suck air Here's through your mouth. Mm -hmm. And when you suck air through your mouth and drink wine, it makes the wine taste more acidic, taste it, makes it taste more harsh. When it's cut cleanly, the wine will direct exactly on the palate, on the tongue, where it's supposed to. Certain wines will taste wow. better if it's right in the center, okay. right in the tip, and it'll make them taste completely different. All right. So you can take a sip of the one in that glass. I couldn't wait, actually. <laughs> And then when you take a sip out of the other glass, they will taste like two different wines, even though we poured the same Pinot Noir in there. All right, here comes Bevel. And, that, and then when you take a little sip of that, it'll taste a little harsher. Oh, yeah. Completely different. Completely different. Yeah. It's the same wine? Same wine. And they've been poured at the exact same time. 
So that one's not more aerated than the other. Amazing. Same, same exact wine. That is amazing. So remember, the top of the glass you want is thin as the regular bowl. Correct. Nothing up on top that makes that a lip. Right. That makes exactly. a difference. And the bigger bowl makes, well, it allows probably the wine to breathe and for you yep. to smell what's in there. And with that type I'm of learning wine, so oh much. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is Pinot Noir. Everybody generally knows that Pinot Noir is a little bit more elegant, yeah. delicate style wine, more elegant than Cabernet. So it needs a little bit more room to get those delicate nuances to come up through the, the side of the glass. That's amazing. Now, when it comes to tasting, there's, a, there's an exercise that you need to go through in order to properly taste the wine. Um, when, when you look at wine, the first thing you want to do, and this is why they're clear, is you want to be able to see the, the wine. And this allows you to get the intensity of the color, the hue, the brilliance, all that sort of thing. Um, before you even begin to taste it, you want to smell it. Mm -hmm. uh, most of what enjoyment that you get out of wine comes through your olfactory sense. So when you swirl wine like that, you can see that it kind of creates more of a cone mm -hmm. and goes up through the um, sides of the rim. And that will give it more surface contact with air and allows you to smell it mm. easier. So then at that point, that's when you get to do the fun part and actually taste the wine. And actually, when it comes to tasting the wine, taste and smell creates the flavor. Mm. And so you want to be able to roll it all through your mouth, get it all over your palate, take, swallow the wine, and then just pay attention for a second about the finish. And that will give you all of the other flavors that kind of precipitate on the palate after you swallow. This is great. This is really a learning lesson for today. Oh, yeah. And, and when it comes to drinking wine, it's all about slowing down. You know, gulping True. your wine right. will really only allow you to taste a little bit on the back end, on the finish after you swallow. Slowing down, paying attention to it will really enable you to, to listen to what the wine is telling you. Wine has a story to tell. Mm. And the proper glassware and the proper technique in tasting wine will allow you to listen. Bill, to I love it. I love the story. All right, everybody, you got to get in on this. The Premier Group, Premier Wine and Spirits, 7890 Transit Road in Williamsville. Give them a call at 565-3020, or you can uh, email Bill directly at bill at premiergroup.net. Portions of the AM Buffalo program are sponsored. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of WKBW-TV or the host.